so we are moving to the our next chapter that is structure of atom so now we completed our two chapter theories that is uh, some basic concept and uh, solutions uh, one chapter from uh, plus one topic and then another chapter from plus two topic and this is a topic uh, related to our plus one this is structure of atom so for the structure of atom introductionally you have to know about uh, what is electron proton neutron the electron are uh, these negatively charged uh, compounds and proton are positively charged and neutrons are chargeless these electrons are represented by a symbol that is small letter e uh, protons are represented by a symbol p and the neutrons are represented by a small letter symbol n then electron is discovered by jj thompson proton is discovered by goldstein and neutron is discovered by chadwick you have to clearly note that electron is discovered by jj thompson proton is discovered by goldstein and neutron is discovered by chadwick this thing you have to keep it in your mind so we are first of all we studied about what is electron proton and neutron the electron is a negatively charged compound represented by a symbol e and it is discovered by jj thompson proton is a positively charged letter it is represented by the letter p it is discovered by goldstein and neutron is a chargeless compound represented by represented by the symbol n and it is discovered by chadwick first of all you have to know about the charge of electron charge of proton and charge of neutron charge of electron is uh, electron have negative charge and the charge is minus 1.6022 into 10 raised to minus 19 the unit of charge we can represent as coulomb the, the for the overall charge of electron is uh, minus 1.6022 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb what about the charge of proton it will be uh, plus 1.6022 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and the charge of uh, neutron will be equal to 0 is that clear now we are going to the some of the discoveries of these electrons and uh, some conditions so first of all we are discussing about the thomson model of an atom thomson model of an atom is like uh, the watermelon therefore it is also not, that is watermelon inside the red species and they have a little bit of seeds in it in the same way the thomson model of atom have a positive sphere in which negative electrons are uniformly distributed what is the condition it have a positive sphere sphere in which the negative electrons are uniformly distributed is known as the Thomson model of an atom. What is the condition again? Thomson model of an atom consists of a positive sphere in which the negative electrons are uniformly distributed. It is represented as like a pudding that is the cake that is plum pudding which have lots of nuts around it. Therefore it is also known as the plum pudding model or a rising pudding model or a watermelon model these are the another three names of a uh, thomson model of an atom so thomson model of an atom is also known as the plum pudding model watermelon model or rising pudding model it have a positive sphere in which the negative charges are uh, uniformly distributed now we are going to discussing about the next topic that is rutherford model of an atom the rutherford model of an atom represent our solar system that is a central nucleus and the electrons are revolving around the nucleus therefore it is also known as a planetary model of an atom it is known as a planetary model of an atom in the con uh, condition the experiment of uh, rutherford alpha scattering experiment the alpha particle here considered as a helium nuclei the alpha particle is a helium nuclei helium that is atomic number two mass number four the alpha particle is helium nuclei he passes the alpha particle through the gold foil that is au foil gold foil and there is a screen that is a fluorescent screen made up of zinc sulfide zinc sulfide the, there are three conditions that is majority of the alpha particles passes through the gold foil because majority of the space in an atom is empty some alpha particles deviate in a very small angles and very small alpha particles returns back at an angle of they return back at an angle of 180 degree there are three main observations in the alpha scattering experiment the alpha scattering experiment is put forward by rutherford and that experiment is known as a rutherford alpha scattering experiment the alpha particles is known as a helium nuclei that having atomic number two and mass number four 
before when this helium nuclei is passes through the gold foil it, uh, the majority of the alpha particles passes through the gold foil some alpha particles deviate in a very small angles and some alpha particles returns back at an angle of 180 degree there are the basic three observations made by rutherford during this experiment based on this experiment he uh, put forward his conclusions that most of the space in an atom is empty this is the first conclusion because majority of the alpha particles passes through the gold foil because majority of the space of the atom is empty that's why majority of the alpha particle passes through it the second point is um, the positive charge the positive charge is occur at the center that's why the alpha particle is the positive charge the alpha particles the going is positive charge the nucleus is also positive charge positive positive there is a repulsion when this alpha particle directly hit the positive charge the positive positive repulsion and it will turns back at an angle of 180 degree therefore they get their value that the positive charge occur at the center called the nucleus. The positive charge is always occur at the center. The third point is atom are surrounded around the nucleus because atoms are uh, uh, revolving around the nucleus. These are the main three conclusions made by Rutherford. So we explain what is electron, proton, neutron and the Thomson model of an atom and the Rutherford model of an atom. Electron is discovered by JJ Thomson, proton is discovered by Goldstein and a neutron is discovered by Chadwick. Then charge of electron is minus 1.6022 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. Charge of proton is plus 1.6022 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and the charge of neutron is it is chargeless that is zero then first of all we discussed about thomson model of an atom thomson model of an atom is also known as the watermelon model of an atom or a plum pudding model of an atom or a racing pudding model of an atom because it have a positive sphere in which the negative electrons are uniformly distributed okay then we discussed about a rutherford model of an atom it represents the solar system therefore it is also known as a planetary model of an atom in this condition of planetary that he did an experiment is known as the alpha scattering experiment alpha particles is known as the helium nuclei with atomic number two and mass number four so when the helium nuclei that is alpha particle passes through the gold foil there are three observations what are the three observations majority of the alpha particle passes through the gold foil some alpha particles deviate in a very small angles some alpha particles returns back at an angle of 180 degrees based on this observations he concluded that uh, most of the space in an atom is empty and the uh, center is a positive charged nucleus and the atoms are uh, uh, revolving around the nucleus these are the major three conclusions he's made then we have to know some of the important notes regarding to the atoms and their nuclei the radius of the atom is always represented as a 10 raised to minus 10 meter and the radius of the nucleus is a 10 raised to minus 15 meter also you have to know the mass of electron the mass of electron is based on a millikan oil drop experiment so based on the millikan oil drop experiment you got the mass of electron is equal to 9.1094 into 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram that's the value what's the value 9.1094 into 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram what is the radius of an atom 10 raised to minus 10 then what is the radius of the nuclei it will be some more or less so it is 10 raised to minus 15 meter so then what is the uh, mass of electron mass of electron is uh, 9.1094 into 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram is that clear then we are going to discussing about this, some of the isotope isober condition before that we have to know about what is atom what is atomic uh, number what is mass number what is uh, neutrons and everything so first of all what is atomic number atomic number is uh, by universally we can represent it by the letter z okay so we can represent it by the letter z so where z is equal to number of proton is equal to number of electron that is z is equal to number of proton is equal to number of electron then the mass number is represented by the letter a where a is equal to number of proton is equal to number of neutrons so if you want to find the number of neutron how can you find the number of neutrons mass number minus atomic number for example I am taking carbon carbon having atomic number 6 and mass number 12 here the atomic number z is equal to 6 where z is equal to 6 means the proton and the electron both are will be equal to 6 that is 
this proton P is equal to 6, E is equal to 6, then what will be the mass number is already given it is 12, that is given it is A is equal to 12, then you have to find a neutron, neutron is equal to A minus Z, where A is 12 and Z is 6, that is 12 minus 6, it will be equal to 6. This is a method to find a proton, neutron, electron and uh, the atomic number, mass number in an atom. Is that clear? So we discussed about the atomic number and the mass number. Then we have to deal with the isotope, isobar, isotone and some other isoelectronic species. Then isosters and isodiaphors is also there. First of all, I am going to discussing about isotope. What is mean by isotope? From the childhood itself, from the 8th standard itself, you are studying about isotope. Isotope of the, that is substance that is same element same element having see here same element these are three same element that is three hydrogen same element having same atomic number their atomic number is one same element having same atomic number but different mass number is known as the isotope what is mean by isotope same element having same atomic number but different mass number is known as the isotope for example this is h11 is known as protium h12 is known as deuterium h1 3 is known as the tritium. The protium is also known as the ordinary hydrogen. Deuterium is also known as the heavy hydrogen. This deuterium is used for the preparation of heavy water. This heavy water is used as a moderator and a cooler in nuclear reactors. And this tritium is known as a radioactive hydrogen. Let us find out the proton, electron, neutron in each of the cases. So what about the proton here? Here the proton will be equal to 1 because atomic number is 1 and what about the electron electron will be also is equal to 1 what about the neutron neutron will be equal to 1 minus 1 how it is 1 minus 1 a minus z is the neutron that is 1 minus 1 will be equal to 0 is that fine then when we are calculating here that is here the proton is equal to 1 the electron is equal to 1 neutron is equal to 1 that is 2 minus 1 will be equal to 1 and what about the third condition that is h13 where the proton is equal to 1 the electron is equal to 1 and neutron is equal to 2 so we can also come conclude that in an isotope they having same proton and electron the proton and electron are same there is no change in the proton and electron but there is a change in the number of neutrons that is the number of neutrons are changing we can also define the isotope as the element having same same element having same proton and electron but different in their neutron is also known as the isotope there are two definitions i am saying the first definition is same at atom having same same atomic number but different mass number we can also conclude that the element the same element having same proton and electron but different number of neutrons uh, is known as the uh, isotope what about the isobar isobar is isobar is known as the element having same mass number but different uh, atomic number is known as the uh, isobar same mass number but different atomic number let us see some example argon potassium calcium that is atomic number is 18 19 20 where the mass number is 40 40 40 that is same mass number that are different element and this uh, different atomic number is known as the uh, isobar then we are going discussing about the isotone. Isotone is the element having same number of neutrons. It may be different element. So different element having same number of neutrons are known as the isotones. It is carbon, nitrogen, oxygen is an isotope of carbon 6 14 7 15 8 16 here the neutron is equal to 14 minus 6 is equal to 8 here the neutron is equal to 15 minus 7 will be equal to 8 here the neutron is equal to 16 minus 8 is equal to 8 here the both three cases the number of neutrons are same that is same number of neutrons this is known as the isotone so you studied what is isotope what is isobar and what is mean by isotone then we are going to discussing about the next one that is known as the isoelectron iso electron what is mean by iso electron iso electron are those which i am saying about iso electron iso electron what is mean by iso electron iso electron or iso electronic species it is also represented as the iso electronic species the iso electronic species have uh, same number of uh, same number of electrons is known as the iso electron for example example if uh, I'm doing O2 minus then F minus then neon Na plus Mg2 plus 
a l 3 plus and doing these all examples here what about the electron here what about the electron already atomic number is 8 here it is 9 here it is 10 it is 11 12 and here it is 13 what about the electron here here the electron is 8 2 minus is it get it uh, get 2 electron that is 8 plus 2 is equal to 10 electron will be here here the number of electron is equal to 10 what about the electron here it is 9 minus is 9 plus 1 is equal to 10 already in the case of neon the electron is equal to 10 in the case of sodium the electron is equal to 11 plus means it leaves one electron that is 11 minus 1 is equal to 10 and what about magnesium that is 12 uh, electron is equal to 12 minus 2 is equal to 10 what about aluminium that is 13 minus 3 is equal to 10 in this all these cases the number of electron is equal to 10 this is known as isoelectronic species that is the element having same number of electrons are known as isoelectronic species is that clear so we discussed about uh, isotop isobar isoton isoelectron and some of the outer syllabus substance are also so given in your material that is isoesters and isodiaphors we can discuss that two things in during our life sections so next we are going to electromagnetic radiation what is meant by electromagnetic radiation the radiation which associated with the both the electric and the magnetic field because the radiation is due to both electric and the magnetic field is known as a electromagnetic radiation for this electromagnetic radiation there is an increasing order of wavelength are given it is known as the electromagnetic spectrum the arrangement of each waves in the form of increasing form of wavelength is known as a electromagnetic spectrum the electromagnetic spectrum starting from cosmic ray then gamma ray x-ray uv visible ir micro verb radio uh, micro verb radio verb long radio verbs this is the order once again what is the order cosmic ray gamma ray x-ray uv visible ir micro verb radio verb long radio verb this is the order of electromagnetic spectrum so so what is meant by electromagnetic radiation the radiation associated with both electric and the magnetic field is known as the electromagnetic radiation so we have the order of electromagnetic spectrum starting from cosmic ray gamma ray x-ray uv visible ir micro verb radio verb long radio verbs so we are going to the Planck's quantum theory what is Planck's quantum theory Planck's explained that energy can be absorbed or emitted in a small packets the small packets of energy energy is known as the quanta or it is known as the photon that is the packets of light that is E is equal to H nu where H is the Planck's constant its value is 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule per joule second is you know the value of the Planck's constant then we are going to study about the photoelectric effect and black body radiation it is based on the Planck's quantum theory photoelectric effect states that when a beam of light fall into a metal surface it suddenly ejects electrons without any lag the photo the elements which showing photoelectric effect should be a metal with a low ionization enthalpy that means potassium rubidium cesium having low ionization enthalpy mm this cesium has extremely smaller ionization enthalpy that so it shows the most of the photoelectric effect that is when a beam of light fall into a metal surface it suddenly eject electrons without any lag is known as a photoelectric effect the kinetic energy of this light that is the kinetic energy of the light is directly proportional to frequency of the incident radiation that is the frequency of the emitted radiation so we can write that kinetic energy is equal to that energy of the beam of light minus energy of the incident radiation that is h nu minus h nu zero then we are going to study about what is mean by black body radiation black body is an ideal body which can absorb and emit all types of radiation is known as a black body radiation what is mean by a black body radiation black body is an ideal body which can absorb and emit all types of radiation is known as a black body example of the black body is the carbon black 
then we are going to the next topic that is atomic spectrum of hydrogen for this atomic spectrum of hydrogen there are different structures we can use the code lbpbp that is lyman series bomber series passion series bracket series fund series and uh, without ncrt there is another thing i'm using here humphrey series this is not included in our ncrt but we have to know it for better so what are the things lyman series bomber series passion series bracket series fund series and the humphrey series what is the value of n1 their n1 will be lyman series is 1 then uh, bomber series it will be 2 then passion series is 3 bracket series is 4 fund series is 5 humphrey series 6 will be 6 and what is the value of n2 if it is 1 it can be 2 3 4 anything up to infinity and if it is 2 it can be same 3 4 up to infinity if it is 3 it will be 4 4 4 5 etc 6 up to infinity then if it is 5 it will be 6 7 8 up to infinity and if it is 6 it will be 7 8 9 up to infinity the Lyman series is shown in the UV region Balmer series is shown in the visible region passion bracket fund and Humphrey series are uh, seen in the IR region that is infrared region so then what all things we studied we studied first of all about the electromagnetic radiation that is a radiation associated with the electric and the magnetic field so the uh, we have the certain order cosmic ray gamma ray x-ray uv visible uh, UV, visible, IR, microverb, radio verb, long radio verbs. Then we studied about uh, it is an increasing order of uh, wavelength. Then we studied about Planck's quantum theory that is equal to that explaining the form of conda or a photon e is equal to HNV is the equation. Then we studied about the photoelectric effect and the black body radiation. And also we studied the atomic spectrum of a hydrogen. So Based on this atomic spectrum of hydrogen, we are explaining the Rydberg's equation or Rydberg's formula. What is Rydberg's formula? New bar that is verb number is equal to 1 by lambda that is verb length inversely proportional. Verb number is inversely proportional to verb length is equal to Rh into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. That is new bar is equal to 1 by lambda equal to Rh into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 n2 square where nu bar is the verb number lambda is the verb length and rh is known as the Rydberg constant and the value is 1096777 centimeter inverse what's the value of rh 1096777 centimeter inverse so i'm giving you a question to find the verb number of first and the last line of lyman series we have to find the verb number that is nu bar of the first line and the last line already for the first line what will be the n1 value we have to find the n1 and n2 for Lyman series for Lyman series n1 will be equal to 1 n2 for the first line it will be equal to 2 for the first line it will be equal to 2 what about the second line second line it will be equal to 3 what about the third line third line it will be equal to 4 is that fine so the first line it will be equal to 2 so for you new bar we have to find the verb number is equal to rh into 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 2 square that is 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4 we cross multiplying we get uh, 3 rh by 4 that is the verb number we already know that uh, verb new bar is equal to 1 by lambda therefore lambda is equal to 1 by new bar lambda is equal to 1 by new bar because it is inversely proportional so for this equation if you have to find the verb uh, length uh, lambda so lambda is equal to lambda is equal to 1 by new bar lambda is equal to 1 by new bar is equal to 1 by 3 rh by 4 it will be equal to 4 by 3 rh this will be the lambda you got it what is the value of rh 1096 7, 7 centimeter inverse then we are going with the last line in the case of last line of the Lyman series the value of n1 will be always equal to 1 the value of n2 is changing if it is second line it will be 2 if it is third line it sorry if it is a first line it will be equal to 2 if it is second line it will be equal to 3 if it is a third line it will be equal to 4 if it is the last line n2 will be equal to infinity so it will be equal to new bar is equal to rh into 1 by 1 square minus 1 by uh, infinity square that is rh into 1 by 1 minus 1 by infinity is equal to 0.
0 that is equal to rh that is nu bar is equal to rh then lambda is equal to 1 by nu bar is equal to 1 by rh is that clear so we got the how to find the verb number and the verb length of the first and the last line of the Lyman series so during our uh, live section i will give some more works about this we one. know that quantum mechanics and classical mechanics are the important parts of our structure of atom classical mechanics deals with macroscopic particles but quantum mechanics deals with microscopic particles this quantum mechanics is developed by scrodinger Schrodinger, they know he put forward his equation is known as Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation is E psi equal to H cap psi, where E is energy and psi is a verb function, H cap is a Hamilton operator. From that we get the energy value and based on this I am going to discussing about the quantum numbers. The quantum numbers, we can classify it as a code palms. That palms means principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. The principal quantum number is represented by the letter small n. And the azimuthal quantum number is represented by the letter small l. And the magnetic quantum number is represented by the letter small m. And the spin quantum number is represented by the letter small s. So first of all, we are going to discussing about principal quantum number. The principal quantum number, as we discussed that it is represented by the small letter n. The principal quantum number explains about the shell. If it is represented as k, l, m, n, O like that way. That's why from the principal quantum number we get the size that means it represents this shell shell number. Okay. Then the second one is azimuthal quantum number, it is L. It is represent the subshell values. That is, if L is equal to 0, and if L is equal to 0, it is the subshell S. If L is equal to 1, the subshell is P. If L is equal to 2, the subshell is D. And if the L is equal to 3, the subshell is F. They are the major four subshells we have. That is, if N is equal to 1, if N, N is a principal quantum number. If N is equal to 1, L is equal to 0. That is, its subshell is S. If n is equal to 2, the L is equal to 0, comma 1, that is S, comma P, it have two subshells. And if n is equal to 3, L is equal to 0, comma 1, comma 2, that is S, comma P, comma D. If n is equal to 4, the L is equal to 0, comma 1, comma 2, comma 3, that is S, P, D, F, they are the four subshells. So from that we get the subshell values. Then the third one is magnetic quantum number. From the magnetic quantum number, we had to use of this azimuthal quantum number. That is, to find the magnetic quantum number, we get m is equal to 2l plus 1. That's our equation. From this magnetic quantum number, we will get the orientation. The orientation of the subshells. Okay. Then, if the M is equal to, for example, in the case of S subshell, in the case of S subshell, the value of L is equal to 0. Therefore, M is equal to 2 into L plus 1, that is 2 into 0 plus 1, the value is 1. It is represented as 0. And in the case of P subshell, in the case of that is P orbital, the value of L is equal to 1, that is M is equal to 2 into 1 plus 1, that is the value is equal to 3. That is the P orbital, the P orbit, pre orbital contain 3 orbitals, it have 3 orbitals, the center one 0 and the left one minus 1 and the right one plus 1. In the case of d orbital, d have l value is equal to 2, therefore m is equal to 2 into 2 plus 1 that is equal to 5. Therefore it have 5 orbitals, the value is 0, minus 1, plus 1, minus 2, plus 2. These are the values of the d subshells and you can also find the values of f. Okay, take it as a homework. And the next quantum number is spin quantum number. From the spin quantum number, either it will be spin up 
or it will be spin down if it is spin up it is represented by plus 1 by 2 if it is spin down it is represented as minus 1 by 2 these are the four quantum numbers we are discussed here so students let us go through the the main part of the chapter and it's the last part of this chapter that is a Bohr model of an atom Bohr prescribes many things in the, about the atom because he prescribes about describes about the orbital because the electrons are revolving in a particular path is known as orbital the second point uh, he introduced the energy of the electron is not changes according to james clark maxwell he said that the energy will be decreases by rotating around the orbital and it will finally collapse in the nucleus and he now said that energy of the electron is not changes by the bohr model of an atom according to bohr model of an atom angular moment mvr is equal to nh divided by 2 pi and the angular momentum of an electron in an orbital angular momentum of an electron in an orbital is equal to h divided by 2 pi into root of l into l plus 1 for example if it is s orbital you know that that you studied about quantum mechanics the value of l a value for s p d f orbital for s orbital l is equal to 0 for p orbital l is equal to 1 for d orbital l is equal to 2 for f orbital l is equal to 3 for example in the case of s orbital for uh, the L, L, S orbital that will is L is equal to 0. So, for this whole, this uh, angular momentum will be equal to 0. For P orbital, this L is equal to 1, that is L into L plus 1, that is uh, 2, that is root 2H divided by 2 pi will be the answer. You got it? This way you have to find the angular momentum of an electron. Then the energy is the energy of the given equation that is minus 1312Z square divided by N square, where N is the orbital number and Z is the atomic now uh, atomic number the unit is kilojoule per mole and the radius rn is equal to 0 0.529 into n square divided by z where n is the orbital if it is 1 as 2 the value of n is 1 if it is 1 as 2 2 as 2 2 p 6 3 as 2 3 p 6 the value of n is equal to 3 this last shell orbital number that is uh, the n value there is a uh, unit is Armstrong. so these are the basic uh, conditions about the Bohr model of an atom now let us do the limitations of Bohr model of an atom. The Bohr model of an atom does not explain about the stability of an atom. He cannot explain about the stability of an atom. Also, he cannot explain about mz. What is mean by mz? You are wondering what is mean by mz. Z is for Z-man effect. He cannot explain about uh, Z-man effect and he cannot explain about uh, Stark effect. Z-man effect and uh, Stark effect. Splitting of spectral lines in the magnetic field is known as the Zeeman effect uh, and the splitting of spectral lines in the electrical field is known as Stark effect. Uh, for simplicity of Zeeman effect, I am using MZM for magnetic field splitting, it is Zeeman effect. So he cannot explain about stability and uh, Zeeman effect and the Stark effect. Zeeman effect is the splitting of spectral lines in the magnetic field and Stark effect is the splitting of spectral lines in the electrical field. Is that clear? So we studied about Bohr model of an atom, its basic equations and we studied the limitations of Bohr model of an atom. Now we already know that de Broglie equation, that de Broglie is directly proportional to H that is uh, Planck's constant and inversely proportional to momentum that is P that is H is equal to H uh, that is lambda is equal to H divided by M into V. Momentum is equal to mass in the velocity that is equal to H divided by root 2 M K E where K E is the kinetic energy is equal to H divided by root 2 m q v that q is a charge and v is a potential that is the velocity okay then heisenberg's uncertainty principle heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that uh, if we cannot find the exact position that is delta x uh, and exact momentum of an electron because we are studying about quantum mechanics quantum mechanics explains about uh, microscopic particles at the same time and at the same position so we cannot find the exact exact position and the exact momentum of an electron at the same time of an electron is explained by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So for this chapter we have to little bit more studied, study about uh, probability density. Probability density. The probability density is uh, represented by psi square or chi square. The probability density is the maximum density of finding electrons in an orbital is known as the probability 
probability density. The point at which the probability density is equal to zero is known as node. It is known as a node. The point at which the probability density will be equal to zero is known as a node. For S orbital, how to find the angular node that is equal to n minus 1. For example, if it is 1s orbital, it will be 1 minus 1, the number of nodes is equal to 0. If it is 2s orbital, it will be 2 minus 1, it will be equal to 1. This is the method to find the number of node in the S orbital. In the case of a P orbital, you have the equation n minus 2, that is, for example, 3 p orbital you have the equation that is 3 minus 2 that is equal to 1 number of node is equal to 1 for it in the case of d orbital you have the equation n minus l minus 1 where l is z we have different types of mag, uh, quantum numbers principal azimuthal principal quantum number is represented by n azimuthal quantum number is represented by l so that azimuthal quantum number is l that is n minus l minus 1 for example if it is 5d orbital 5d orbital what is the value of d that is l value of d for you already know that yes p d f l is equal to 0 1 2 3 therefore here is equal to n is equal to 5 that is equal to 5 minus l value is equal to 2 5 minus 2 minus 1 that is equal to 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 will be the value so in the case of 5d orbital the number of node is equal to 2 this is a method to find the number of node so what is mean by probability density the uh, uh, maximum uh, tendency or the probability of finding electrons in an orbital is known as the probability density. The point at which the probability density is equal to 0 is known as node. Number of node in S orbit is equal to n minus 1. Number of node in the P orbit is equal to n minus 2. Number of node in the D orbit is equal to n minus L minus 1. This is a method to find the number of nodes. If that's clear, then this is the basic figures of the D orbitals. We have, we have have five orbitals dxy dxz dy square dx square minus y square dz square is that clear quantum mechanics we are explaining the last video then the last portion of this chapter you have to study about uh, of bow principle and uh, Pauli's exclusion principles and um, Hunt's rule the Pauli's exclusion principle says that uh, when the two elements are uh, two electron it should be in the opposite spin one in the clockwise and another should be in the anti-clockwise direction Hunt's rule states that uh, the filling of orbital that is if in the case of filling of orbital I'm explaining here so Hunt's rule explains that uh, if there is an orbital, that is if it is a, a d orbital, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the filling of orbital in the first orbit, uh, first orbital, second, third, fourth, fifth, then only you can fill the next one in the first orbital. This is known as a Hunt's rule. This is known as a Hunt's rule. Is that clear? So Hunt's rule and Pauli's exclusion principle. Pauli's exclusion principle states that the spin of two electron in an orbital should be in the opposite direction here see the spin of these two electron is in the opposite direction one is clockwise and another one will be the anti-clockwise direction so we can discuss the other problems and questions in our live videos thank you bright education center medical and engineering and runs coaching center hilal area doha Qatar. for further inquiries contact 3060679